might make your head blow off. Hey, yo, it's a talk show host, Kana Lassiter. Join me for an episode of Relation, the most lit, lit hour of adult conversation. Hold up, hold up. You know you can't forget about me. It's 51 Spade, Alpha Male G-O-D, one half of Relations. You want to hear the truth? Can, 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 you, can, you, can you handle the truth? It's where it's at, baby. It's where it's at, baby. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter. It's your boy, Alpha Male G-O-D, 51 Spade, the ninja you love to hate. And we got two exciting topics to jump into tonight. The first one being, should you exchange your lock code with your partner, and is it okay to go through their phone? Topic number two are the myths of sex. Myths. Just things that we heard. Are they true? Not true. Let's dive in. Let's start with the more intense topic about exchanging your lock code and being able to go through your partner's phone. Now, obviously, I want to know the lock code thing, I think, is pretty basic. I mean, your partner should have the lock code to your phone. Yes? Maybe. I say yes. I mean, I, there are too many reasons why it might be important, especially if you're in a marriage. Something could happen to the other partner. You, your phone is dead. Your partner's having a cardiac arrest, a stroke, a seizure. You can't get in the phone for what reason? That just looks really weird. I think if you're married, let's say this, depending on the level yeah, of your relationship. Tragedy. <laughs> but I'm okay. just saying you never don't don't leave your partner without the power of being able to get to your personal information okay. and I think everybody's phone holds a lot of information their in-laws information a lot of stuff is in the phone so I think depending on the level of the relationship there you should have the unlock code to your partner's phone so we doing not just to be nosy but to be responsible but can a woman really not be nosy if they had the, the lock to your code your social media um, all of the above yeah. could, could could they really not be nosy um if they're a responsible person and they're at a level in the relationship where they're doing lots of things in your life i think them going your, through your phone they might not be being nosy they might actually be looking for their in-laws address or you know i'm not saying they might not stumble on something that's probably why we're having the conversation to begin with you can't stumble but, on something if you're being nosy okay but i think what i'm trying to say is you're using the word nosy i'm just saying that your partner should have access mm -hmm. Now, will they use that access to be nosy? I think it depends on what's going on in the home. If there's a reason to be nosy. Now, you just wake up to be a nosy bitch. That would be a problem for me. You understand what I'm saying? I like, understand. you know, what I'm saying if you're waking up every day, just oh, I'm about to go look through his phone. I think that's extra, you know, but to have access to the phone. I think if she should, depending on who she is mm -hmm. in your life. OK, I mean, this is a very broad topic, so I'm going to tackle it like this. <clears throat> when you're talking about unlock codes, social media, all those type of things and having access to it, I always say the same thing. Like, and it's probably going to sound a little crazy to most of the listeners this and that, but I don't trust anybody, not even my lady. I just trust people to be who they are. And that's just the way that I look at things. Like, I'm not a private eye investigator. I'm not, I don't want to do all this extra work to if I feel something going on, and, and I kind of get what you're saying, like, you know, they're they not going to go through your phone because of no reason. Exactly. Like, like, they might have a hunch or whatever, this and that. Yeah. But my thing is, like, I think you know your partner. Like, I think you know your partner, what your partner is capable of. I think you know your partner of if they're going to... I think that might be a stretch to say that you know what your partner I'm, I'm is saying. I'm not saying... Well, I'm not saying you know the nigga a mass murderer. I'm I'm saying I think you know your partner and what they're capable of. Like, like I always often hear women say some shit like woman's intuition and this and that. I don't think that's woman's intuition. You just know your partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what could turn your partner head. You know, like I agree with what, what he what he might go for, what he might not go for. Like, I, I'll give like an example. Like, for me. I don't answer like um, if I get a phone call, I don't answer like phone calls I don't know. Like if I see a fucking number I don't know, I ain't answering the motherfucker. But I often notice women like they'll see a, a, a phone number come in. They don't know it. 
but they have to call it back to see who it is. I often, I always ask that question, like, what the fuck are you calling the phone number back for? And you it, don't well, even, well, for and me, you don't even, and you don't even know who it is, well, or why, and why is it that business. important? I mean, if you have a business it's, card that's floating around from two years ago, it might be a business card. You just never know. Who's calling your phone? If that's your cell phone number and someone called it, then obviously you gave them the number or they got it from somewhere. So if you have my number so and it made what? my phone ring, I'm going to answer okay, it. Okay, so we live, in, we live in a world full of voicemails. But they you'll never a, know. That's, yeah, that's true. That they, that's they true. What you mean okay. you'll never know? We do live in a world first of, okay. uh, with some voicemails. That's true. Um, we live in a world where people can leave messages. Now we even live in a world where even if you miss that phone call and it's that important, like they'll send, leave a, a message, they'll text any of the above. Other than that, I just feel like as a bill collector, and of course, it is everything is dependent upon every you know every individual. But I mean, I've been in situations where the motherfucker ain't <laughs> they ain't run no business and no shit like that. They just had to know who it was calling them, mm -hmm. and it's, for me, it's just like it's not that important to know. Like, and my lady say, phone call. I get a phone call in the morning time. Who is that? I don't know. That's about as far as that fucking. <laughs> that's about as far as that shit go go. Like I don't know until I find time to get over to it if I want to answer it or you know whatever the case may be. And I think sometimes those things make people kind of touchy feeling. But unlike phones, social media, I'll just broaden it. I'll broaden it out a little bit. Like if a motherfucker want to really keep some shit from from you, he will. And I also feel like with most men, some men just don't care. Like, I don't really care if, if my lady have the lock to my phone because I don't really give a fuck what come through. You know what I'm saying? If it's a bitch, don't care. Like, I also know that person well enough. It's like, what you going to do, yeah? You might cry a little bit, might have a little argument, and it'll probably be over. From that scenario, this and that, just in my house and I'm saying you did that to yourself like my last lady she was like my ex she was like you know you don't really care about tears I don't I really <laughs> don't I like all that kicking and screaming and all that type of shit just don't touch me you can curse you can do any of those things I really just don't care if you went looking for it and you, and found, you it? found it then you were strong enough to handle whatever the fuck comes out on that table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I just I just feel like that. Now when you're talking about marriage, um, that might be a little bit different, but I throw this out there. Honestly, phone calls, I get. You could probably have that. Sometimes I think like when you married, you might not need to have a social media. Like it, it, that shit is like a devil's playground. So it's like, but so is your phone number. If you like, you the just social said, media, if you want to cheat, it's not so, going to require the, yeah, social but, media for you to do it. But the social media shit is kind of, is way goddamn different than a phone. Reason being is because like like now, people are always on their phone. Women are always on their phone. Um, not intentionally. Let's just say, for instance, like if you post a picture. And then they get a thousand likes. Like I always say, like, there's someone on your social media that you probably don't know, but you have like an internet relationship. Like every time you post a, a picture or some shit like that, this person always like this picture every time you post whatever this is and that. It's like it's not said, it's not out there just for the world to see, but that shit is there. And you, you know, everybody know who that person is. And you know what and you know what your lady do on my end? Every time you post this picture, this bitch always talk, I always gotta like your picture. Why? I don't know. I'm just posting pictures. <laughs> you know, and, and that's and, true. And, and really having control over and, who likes your pictures and things like that. I mean, and vice versa. And that's what I'm saying. Like, do you really want to have those type of fights going on in your household? I, you know what? This is what I'm gonna say about that. I don't want to have those kind of fights in my household, mm -hmm. but I'm disappointed that that it is a fight in my household. I think it's so basic that it should never be a fight. But if we are fighting about it, then it should go away. Absolutely, it should go away. Do you stalk because your, it is so petty? Do you stalk your man's in, uh, uh, social no, media? No, you never have. I stalked it before I got with him, just because I liked him. But yeah. when we became a couple, I did not stalk it. I may have done like maybe one or two thorough investigations that included a couple of page scrolls, you know, a couple of years back, but that was only a couple of times. Why? Why did you feel that that was necessary? 
Um, I think I was curious about a particular person. And I just wanted to see, it, you just know, I wanted to just, get to her. Y'all just through. can't help yourself. So, so my thing is like now, now this is my thing. So, regardless of whether whatever she had going on, what about him? Like it, it to me, it's like you're stalking this person on this person page about somebody else. <laughs> now I want you to. Now you heard what I just said. You're stalking somebody down. else <laughs> through <laughs> your man's page to see about this other person. That's too much motherfucking work. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't have time for that type of You're shit. You're not like, a girl. It's a girl thing. So now it's a, it, now it's a girl thing. Now, it now, and that's and that and that's why I'm going to stop you. That is not true. That is not a girl thing. Because I've even seen, I've even had conversations with women where women say, my man have a problem with my social media. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to remember that, I always tell people this, like, let's say you got like a fat bitch. Nothing wrong with fat bitches. You know what I'm saying? But let's just say you have a bigger woman, okay? And this is what this guy is used to, mm-hmm. okay? Now, I often hear like, you know, you y'all, y'all, y'all men always want these Instagram, you know, Instagram females bodies, and whatever. Right, and right, and right. if you get one, now you got to come over to her world. And her world is a lot different. It's a, it, it, She got like a thousand likes. Comments. So you're saying if a guy has a big chick, he really not gonna worry about it. But if he gets a, a ten, then that's I'm gonna saying, come with a different set of problems. What, what I'm saying is, you were, you what, I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, good. are you are you used? You know, just know what you're signing up for, because you're not gonna be used to that type of thing. So it, it might not be a problem because it's not a problem for her. Like you know, a lot of times, I mean, I see all kind of posts and shit like that. You know, one minute uh, a woman's in, in, in a good place in a relationship. Then all of a sudden she'll get pissed off and then write some shit, shoot your shot. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker had me confused and I was blind and this and that. I'm sorry, I was ignoring y'all. And then it's a floodgate of shit. Like, yeah. you know, that shit don't happen to men. You know what I'm saying? If I break up with my bitch, I'm like, you know but what? But you know what? Those things that you're saying are very basic and only seem amplified because social media exists. If we mm-hmm. didn't have social media and I just broke up with my boyfriend, all I would do is call my girlfriend and say, hey, he's a piece of shit. I'm single now. What we doing tonight? And then she going to get on the phone and call her other girlfriend. It's That is what we're seeing on social media. It's just that we're talking to a whole bunch of people at the same at the same time instead of talking to one person at a time. It's it's just a conversation that has evolved. So I don't think so. Again, I don't think social media is that big of a deal. If it all goes away, we're still going to find a way is what I'm saying. It's the same thing as a conversation between two I'm people saying, except for it's a thousand. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not saying that you can't find a way. I'm just saying minimize the chances. That's all I'm saying. All right. And I, you know what? And I'm not going to. You've said this before in past shows about marriage that you don't think married people should have social media. So I really am not in a place to rebuttal that because statistically social media has broken up a lot of marriages. Oh, they're number one on the list. So, you and, know. And, and, and that's what I'm saying because you get you get desensitized from everyday interaction you know what i'm saying it's like for me it's like i'd be like what is in that fucking phone that's so important you know what i'm saying it's like you be trying to talk to your lady and it's like scroll or what it's like what is in that phone that is so goddamn important you can't put that motherfucker down for like a second and i'm talking it, to you is it is isn't it ironic that the topic of social media would come up in a topic about exchanging lock codes so not only are we just going through the phone to look at your basic texts, we got to go to now your Instagram inbox. We have to go to your Facebook inbox. Mm. It it has made things a lot worse than. Well, that, I mean, it, I mean, because that now rabbit, it's more that, to look at that rabbit or look into. Well, the rabbit, that rabbit hole, hole go that, that deep. Yeah, because that's what I'm right, saying. Like right. that rabbit hole go that deep, and it's like for me, it's fucking true. Um, and if my lady, like, I know her lock. But I just really don't have to have time to be going through that shit. But I be also feel like some of that shit just pop up. Like, debates or, or arguments that we didn't had is because I probably had a phone and it came through right then and there. And I can fucking you see have it. To go find it's it. not that I'm going to go looking for it or see mm-hmm. it or this and that. It's like something going to automatically come through. Okay, so good. We'll stick there. You have your partner's lock code. Mm-hmm. You have their phone for whatever reason. She You're doing sick. something on it. Okay, exactly. Isn't that ironic? Because I said it might be smart because you might be sick. Your partner happened to be sick. You had her phone Mm -hmm. and boom, text comes up that you just can't make any sense out of. Mm -hmm. 
So you didn't actually go looking for it. No. So then that people now who have not exchanged lock codes with their partner might be thinking, wow, that might create a problem because you can't control what people are going to send to your phone. So if your partner has your lock code and they just have it for any reason. Uh, I don't know. I agree with that last statement that you made. You can control. I mean. No, you can't. Yes, you can. You can't control what people send to your phone. Well, and you, you can't can. control. What I've gotten comes a dick pic. You, you, I didn't know was coming. And he you knew I had a boyfriend. Well, guess he what? Knew. You ain't get a lot of things you he didn't knew get before I got the dick, the dick pic. You didn't get a dick pic out the blue. Like, ain't nobody send no no random dick pic to your goddamn phone. If that happened, it happened because something that y'all had going on. So don't make that shit seem like it was random. Like, hey, I was just talking to a motherfucking motherfucker. He just unzipped his pants. I was like, you know what? That's just me. Let me do this today. No, like, but it was a past. It was a past lover. Okay, cool. Who decided he just wanted to send me a, a dick pic? Okay, so it was someone you was fucking. Let's not. Let's not fuck. Yeah, around. but they were. We were fucking in the past. Okay, so it's not like I was okay, cheating. I didn't say that you was cheating, but what I'm saying is like, don't make it seem like you can't control certain things. It's like you can't. Uh, what I'm saying is, this. who knew he was gonna Watch wake this. up and be like, you know what? Damn. Well, guess what? Think ain't a dick pic. Guess guess what? My ex. My ex ain't gonna call me. My ex ain't gonna text me. My ex ain't gonna do any of that shit. You know why? Because I did it that shit to the point where she would even be scared to fucking text or call or do any of that shit. That's how you control a narrative. And if you don't do that and you just leave it as open ended, and that's what I'm talking about. But wait a minute, you don't have any relationships in which you didn't end on a bad accord that I do. one day they might be damn. I wonder what Spade doing. I do, but I ain't getting no titty shots. Okay. I ain't getting no pussy shots. All right, but that's you could. You didn't do anything to dead in that situation. It would, could. You chuck, just said chuck. when your ex <laughs> No. You said when you have an ex, you dead it. There are relationships out there that you've had with women that aren't dead because you didn't end on a bad note. Mm -hmm. You just went your separate ways. So mm -hmm. if they wake up one morning and be like, you know what? I'm going to masturbate and record it. Who could I send it to? I'm going to send it to Spade. That will be something me. that you couldn't control. They're not going to send it to me. <laughs> How do you know that? Based on my personality, they're not going to send it to me. Like, for the most part, it's just, that's what I was saying. Like, I trust people to be people. If you are a person that's overly friendly or, or the life of the party or... You know, you don't really deal with drama all that well. You kind of, even in breakups, I noticed that certain people can smooth shit out, especially women. You know, it's like they can have a man and then you be like, hey, who this? Oh, oh that's, 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 that's such and such and that. Yeah, that's yeah. nothing. You know, yeah. we cool. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably hit it off. We'll hit it off. Why? <laughs> like, how do you <laughs> how do you even move into a scenario <laughs> like that to even say something like that? <laughs> Those scenarios happen of what you're talking about just because it just wasn't a dead situation. It might not have been a, a, a reason to dead it, right. but it's just, it is with, you know, it is what it is. But I'd have clobbered your ass if I saw a dick pic come through and I had your phone this and that because we'd have had some fucking explaining to do. But just saying. But that could be explained. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that's something that, if so, someone gets a dick pic, mm -hmm. I mean understand if I, if I had my man's phone and a, and a pussy pic come through, let me be clear. I'm going to be pissed, mm -hmm. but who am I going to be pissed at is something that I have to discover mm -hmm. by asking your ass a series of questions. Mm -hmm. Whose pussy is it? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you had it? <laughs> mm -hmm. When is the last time you communicated with her? You know what I'm saying? You need answers to all that to really go off on your spouse about what's in their fucking phone. You do not have control over what the sin button, what, what's on the other side of the sin button. You really don't because you don't know what frame of mind somebody was in. Are they drunk? Are they mad? Are they playing a prank on you? You just can't look in a phone and determine the whole narrative without giving your partner the chance to explain. So I'm not going to be afraid of giving my partner my lock code based on that. I don't give a fuck who sent what. You have to ask me a series of questions to find out whether what I got was my fault. So is it the same on the reverse end? Because a lot of times, men don't even get the chance to explain. We just always in the They wrong. should have their chance to explain. I didn't ask you we should. Now I'm asking you. <laughs> now I'm asking you how it should be. <laughs> I should be rich. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm asking you, Does do you think it go the same way it's, for a man? It Probably not. Okay. And... The series of questions don't be questions. It be like, you know, who is Keisha? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you fucking this bitch now. They ain't even really, they're like statements. They're not even like questions. They're, they're more statements. When anytime I done probably been in a scenario like that, I don't recall hearing a bunch of questions coming. I heard a bunch of, I fucked this bitch. Uh, uh, this bitch said you did this, this and that. And, and that's the other thing too about like, 
phones, social media, whole nine. It's like you don't really kind of know. I, I I'll give you that. You don't know what's gonna actually come your way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would kind of be on the fence. I guess I guess it depends on what kind of relationship that y'all in. I'm not gonna say it's a a right thing or a wrong thing. Um, if it, you know, sometimes it might help a relationship. Relationships play games a lot of times. It's like, okay, this person keep uh, is is on this person's social media, and you can see it from unlocking this person's phone, this and that. And now this person intentionally has somebody on their phone. It, it, that shit just. It gets could a- be tit for tat if you're dealing with two very immature people. I'm glad that two mature adults are doing this show because this is an example of a healthy conversation between two people. Um, for me, the reason why I'm good at communicating is because when I've noticed when I pop off the handle things escalate really quickly and when things escalate quickly people do and say things they really don't mean shit goes too far and then it's too late to say hey I didn't I ain't talked to that bitch in six years so basically I've ruined my relationship Mm -hmm. over a bitch you haven't even spoke to in six fucking years she woke up and sent you a thought about you went on your social media saw that you doing this and doing that didn't see nowhere that you had a girlfriend decided to send you a pussy pig so having the code is that a is that a trust thing what, like what, what, I think I mean, what, what do you code, co- co- categorize that at I categorize it as having an open relationship with your spouse not open in physical form being that y'all have an open relationship and y'all can see who y'all want to see mm. open as in this is my life and here is the lock code to it. Okay, so if he don't want to give, I'm going to come from a man side. If he don't want to give his code, then what? If he doesn't want to give his code, then there's there's parts of his life that I'm not privy to. So there should be parts of my life that he's not privy to. Um, it so also tat. means, it, it, and that's why I want to say it also means, because I know that you don't like tip for tat, and I actually don't like the way that that came out. That's because I, I understand, but I don't like it. I understand that I said it, but I don't have to like it. Um, I think it also means that I'm more vested in the relationship. If I'm willing to give you my code, you're not willing to give you mine. It means that I'm a little bit more vested in the relationship than you're actually. You know what I mean? So that might make me want to. Doesn't mean I have to. It might want to make me slow down. My friends, if my mom were there and she heard me, she heard this conversation, her advice would be just slow down a little bit. He's not where you are. You can't well, force that's somebody to, to be say. on the same that, level as you. That's, that's what I'm about to ask because I, I, I'm going to tell you this. I noticed that, and this has happened to me on a, on a couple of occasions. I noticed that in, in dating women in the earlier parts, I noticed that certain women will start giving up like certain things. And that have been one of them that I've often ran into. Like they'll be like, well, you can go through my phone or like, uh, my, well, my phone's not locked. You can, you know, you can look through it and this and that. And I kind of, and even then I say, I don't I'm, need that. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. Yeah. I, I'm cool. But it's like, I feel like it's kind of like I'm giving you the access you know what I'm saying? And now I want it. I want your access. Like, I'm just saying, one I'm just saying, thing shouldn't mean I'm, another. Yeah, I don't agree with you on that. I'm saying like how it feel. I'm not saying, yeah. I'm not saying it's I said. totally get it. It, it. I'm saying like it's, it, that's how it, it, it felt. It, I'm, I, I kind of got that, that vibe of, okay, if I look through this phone mm-hmm. and, and obviously I'm not, because if you say look through the phone, oh, I, sure. just, just food for, that. just food for <laughs> thought, women, <laughs> If you say that to a man, if he's smart enough, he's going to say no, because in your mind, you're automatically going to go there. You're going to be like, okay, if I go through this phone, she already set me up because there's nothing in this phone. Right. Not right so, now. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, I have went through and it was some shots in there, but maybe they was left for me. I don't know. Anyway, um, but then you, I just be feeling like in return, she wants my code. In return, it's like I gave you access. And I'll now this and that, and yeah. I just feel like if he doesn't give it, you know, don't fly off the motherfucking handle. Sometimes yeah. it do take. Sometimes. It, sometimes it does take a man a little bit longer to get to the point where he can say, you know, it's his cold. He might want to know certain things about you, and like I said, like after a while, you can kind of tell not everything about your partner, but certain things about your partner of how they are, how they're gonna react to certain shit. Um, you might still, you know, you might be still cool with your exes or whatever this and that. And those sexes might come in randomly from exactly. here or there or whatever this, this and that. And it's like, hey, you got access to this and that. But exactly. like I said, I always tell people, hey, 
be careful what you ask for because sometimes you know you might not be ready for it Let me ask and sometimes you, you got to check yourself too because the second part of that question was was it okay to actually creep into you your to partner's phone because sometimes you know not all the time are we just in the phone doing something innocent mm -hmm. sometimes we are going to look for shit we're actually creeping mm -hmm. and um i have a friend that went through her her man's phone and he completely wow. turned it around on her wow. and said you know that's you you're snooping you're, you're going you're invading my, my privacy personal space, space. Exactly. But in therapy, in relationship therapy or whatever, therapists call that gaslighting. Yeah. Because yeah. now you're saying, hey, this is what you did. You went through my phone and invaded my privacy. But now what's in the phone, what was found is not even an issue anymore. Well, Taking all everything off you and now putting it on the other person. Well, two people, well, both people in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? It might have been. It, it, well, I'll put it to you. I'm not gonna say two people in the wrong. Realistically, just your friend was in the wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why. The reason that your friend is wrong is because you saying you they went through their phone. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't particularly their phone, but they went through a phone and a diary. They went through a couple of things. Okay, this person already knew, had a hunch, had a feeling, suspicious. Yeah, suspicious. They already know what's going on. Like majority of the time, like let's let's cut the fucking bullshit. Like if you go looking for some shit, you already know something there. You just need the fucking confirmation. You need the confirmation in your goddamn skull yeah. to say, I know it's done. I know it's done. Yeah. And this and that. And you're gonna do all that shit to make yourself cry, to boohoo, to feel like shit. But sometimes you need that. that. Sometimes you need that because what the the mm -hmm. if because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I have been there where my partner is just acting weird or doing shit weird or broke character, broke routine, not character, mm -hmm. but broke his routine. So, so, so stop right there. So why you don't ask your partner? Why, why he broke why his it, routine? No. Yes. Because then I look why? crazy. Your ass is crazy. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're crazy. No, no, no. Yes. Because no. Uh, listen, you, yes. and you can't also, you can't show your hand and th you can't <laughs> do that. Games. Now we playing you, games. You damn right. Exactly. You so, can't let your partner okay. know you're on to them If they broke routine for no fucking reason oh. You ain't gonna be like uh, Let me talk to you for a second You broke routine You just let your partner know That okay she knows I broke fucking routine I'm not gonna show my hand I'm gonna just investigate And see if he keep breaking routine Now he doing other shit that's weird Okay it's now time for me to start paying, the shit to, to paying attention To other shit And the thing that you're not separated from Or anybody's partner really isn't separated from In 2020 Is their cellular device Where they're going Where they've been who they're talking to everything what they want to buy everything is right there in that device so if anything i'm you know it's kind of old school to be going through his trousers and looking through the laundry or you know in his suit pocket some old matches from a hotel he may have picked up it's 2020 that's what you want you want the sailor device and the sailor device is probably going to tell you what's going on why he broke his routine that is i'm gonna be honest with you i don't encourage crazy i don't encourage going through your spouse's phone but that would make me go through my spouse's phone those things breaking routine doing things out outside of your character the phone calls at all kinds of night or real early in the morning because don't nobody ain't no other nigga texting another nigga at 7 a.m that's somebody that's up washing their ass getting ready for work that's somebody that work that's most likely a female that works a really uh really early morning job that's saying good morning so when i hear a text or a buzz coming from the phone between six and seven it's a bitch or somebody died so I need, I, the, we, both of those things are equally important. So I'm going to politely go get that phone and see which one it is. So are we in a relationship? Because you did all that huffing and puffing. So I'm trying to figure out, are we in a relationship or we playing I spy? It's not about playing. It's, yeah. it's about all those things. No, it's not. Yes, one it thing is. That, let, me, let me stop. Let me stop you. I'm, I'm going to tell you something about relationships that really tripped me out. And probably why you didn't understand what I just st said is that statement. When you plan, I spy, which you're talking about all this type of shit versus a relationship. One, a relationship involves communication. That's just first and foremost. So that crazy that you're talking about, talking about going through somebody's phone, um, going through their text messages, having access. You worried about some goddamn text messages coming in at seven, seven in, in the morning, this and that. I just feel like you don't need to be in that relationship if you have all that shit going on in your head. 
like you should be sleeping peacefully. You should be. Uh, well, I you, was you, sleeping you, peacefully let until me, the let phone me, went let, off. Let, let me talk. You, you didn't blab it long <laughs> enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should be sleeping peacefully, and even if that went went off, so what? You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't like when when phone and things come up in the morning and that. It could probably be five o'clock or eight o'clock later on that day, and I can ask my lady like, you know. Who called you at seven in the morning? Tonight? Like I don't feel That's like I, I don't feel like I have to fucking like go pick up a phone and see who was in this and this is and that. Like you can't do that. Like I just feel like that you're you're supporting crazy just for the sake of being fucking crazy. Like you either in a relationship or that shit that you're talking about is gonna turn into some other shit. Like you're not even gonna be in a relationship no more. In love, as long as I you know, as long as I've been on this earth and I check. Like, it's not about possession. Like, you don't fucking own me. Like, own, being in a relationship, those two words don't go together. Love is free will, free spirit. So whether I decide to talk to somebody in the morning and it ain't you and this and that, guess what? You're there. I'm where I want to be. So what's all the fucking creeping around and going through text messages and going through social media and all that shit from like... If I'm you, just you, telling you what, what, the, what the signs have to be for me personally. To go crazy. To, not to go crazy, but yeah. to go there. Not go crazy. Let me tell you, this has been really effective on a lot of people. Um, not for me. It hasn't been a really big Achilles heel in my personal relationship. However, um, we did have some listeners okay. who actually commented on this subject. Okay. I'm going to read this first one. Mm -hmm. If there's a lock code, I'd want to know why as a spouse there should be nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. If the relationship is new, maybe they haven't got to the stage where everything is to be shared, such as fetishes, porns, etc. So you would keep your lock code mm -hmm. separate. Um, she also goes on to say um, that I don't think it's okay but I'm guilty of it in a previous relationship. Of going through the phone? I, of going through the phone. Okay. I slowly became addicted to it and kept finding things that made me insecure. The relationship struggled because of this and other things, but this was huge. We even went to counseling about it. So you know this hit the hammer on the nail for me because it's not a big deal in my relationship, it's like, but it's a big, big deal in this one. And that's why you're asking counseling because your ass went off the deep rail. Crazy, just like I said. When you're talking about relationships, like I get all that, and some some people will say, you know, why lock a phone or this and that. Different people have shit in their phone, and it doesn't always require that they hiding some shit from you. Some phone, like I tell my lady to fucking lock her phone, not from fucking me. You just can't have unlocked phones around. You be sending your man shit, nudes. titties, titty pics, nudes. Y'all might have a porn on that goddamn phone that you. The phone got to be fucking locked. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Now you want to give me the you want to give me the code. Cool. I want to give you the code. That's fine. Only thing I could really think of is like I said, certain relationships have to move to that point, and that's why I said you might need to communicate. Sometimes you know for whatever reason, like people just keep shit in their phone just cause. Like I'm not I'm not one of them. But I've noticed that people be keeping text messages that fill up their whole goddamn phone memory just for no reason. Yeah, um, pictures. Women infamous for taking pictures. You look at my phone, 300 pictures. You look at a woman's phone, 5,000 pictures. Like, why do you keep every pic? Like, that's not even fucking necessary. Like, <laughs> I just don't know. Maybe you can answer it. I don't need to answer right now. You know, I'm just saying that those things... Just, you know, and then they just, you just be having accumulation pictures. I just think the phone need to be locked. And if you having a situation about, listen, you locking that phone, I'm just trying to figure out why this conversation is so hard. You locking that phone makes me feel uneasy. What is the reason? And you might get the answer. I have it locked because whatever. You know what I'm saying? I got my, I got my medicine stuff in here. I got personal items that's in here. I, I got pictures of my driver's license, social security, the whole nine. That could be in there. Um, it could be a numerous amount of things, but just assuming is my issue with it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, so to the person that wrote in, it just, I feel like you got the counseling and the key word was she got addicted to it. Yeah. That's the thing that, that I feel like that's a problem. You got addicted to going to some, through somebody's phone, like on any planet that's nuts. Like, it's just like now you're anticipating shit that I feel like. 
you want to make your heart break. You want to you want to find some shit that's gonna make you cry. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's like it's almost like when we you see a kid and then they go and you be like, hey, don't touch that, and then they look at it and they run towards the oven and still touch it, and after the first burn, probably two or three, depending on your kid. But if there's if there's a a poor level of communication in a relationship, for those couples, I think those women might be struggling with not going through the phone because that's how they know everything about their spouse. Their spouse isn't a good communicator. I think maybe it wasn't a bad topic for us, but we are two people in relationships that communication is well in our relationships. So we really can't relate to people who have such a big problem. So I'm very thankful I mean, I to can, our listener that wrote in about yeah, it. We want to encourage everybody to keep doing it. I can relate, but I'm just giving like food for thought. Like it just depends on the relationship you're in and it depends on you, your individuals. But if y'all having those type of things, I'm just saying like don't go through this thing where it's like, I wonder what is he doing? What is who is he talking to? This and that. Just ask. Like some sometimes you'll be you'll you get shot. Sometimes you might ask a guy. He might just say. He might just tell you. He might say, "Fuck it, it's Keisha." You know, it, it, I mean, me and her have been cool for a long time. Ain't nothing going on. No, I'm not fucking her. That's it. So it's just simple as asking. So that's what we'll do when it comes to myths about sex. I get to ask you today. What are some myths that you've heard that we could actually dig into? Myths that I have heard. Yes. I will have to start at number one. Like, and I know it's not for every woman, but women have this thing about big dicks. And big dicks always have great sex. You have to go into detail when you talk about dig, big dicks, because big dicks can be long. Mm -hmm. Big dicks can also be short mm -hmm. and wide. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about size, you got to really go there. Well, I'll go there. So I'll go here. Because I saw this meme the other day. Funny to me, and then I thought about the shit for for just for an instant. So just to fuck y'all up a little bit, I was reading this meme, and it's and it's, it was the woman. The woman starts off, you know, they're dating, whatever this and that, and she asks him in the middle of the sentence, like, "Do you have a big dick?" And he said, "Yeah, I do. What size is your pussy?" And I sat there and thought about it for a second, and I was like, "You know what? We don't put enough emphasis on size for women <laughs> and they pussy." You know what I'm saying? We always getting. Oh my oh, medium. How do you know that? <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> how do you know that? And and I thought and I brought this up for this reason because that's why I brought it up. So I see how you just did that. That's mm -hmm. I, I figured you might fall into this bait. And 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 I was saying to myself, you're right. Big dicks do come big, and some of them come, come wide, short and some yeah. come some, some yeah. short and this and that. But what size is your pussy? And we just don't we don't give enough emphasis on that. Like for me, I like tight pussies. But if you ask majority of women in America or just the world, are every, you tight? Every one of them think they tight. I'm like, did you? This cannot be real. But that's not all y'all just. All y'all don't have tight pussies. Like, let's stop with the bullshit. But that's nah. not even a question. I don't think. And should it be? That's weird. If a woman can ask, that's what I'm saying. It should be. And he 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 made an important an important <laughs> point. It should be like, what size are you? You asking me about my size? What's your size? Are you extra small? Are you a medium? Are you a large? <laughs> you both of your lips closed. Like I want to know some of these questions. Right. It, it sounds it's really weird. I, I just think yeah. asking a guy if he has a big <laughs> penis is a little less evasive than asking a woman what size her vagina is. Why? You get to pull it yours out and hold it every day. You can pull yours out. No, too we and cannot. Hold it too. No, we, we cannot. Yes, you can. No, just we can't. Of, I beg to differ. <laughs> I know a couple of strippers that can prove you wrong. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> but the average woman is not a stripper, and oh, she does yeah. not know. But every woman has a pussy, and, and, and what I'm saying is not that. My point behind it is this. But you I, don't even whisper in your man's ear, like, how, how big is my pussy? Like, hmm. you don't even, you know what I'm saying? You'd have to ask someone else. You'd have to ask the guy that's down there, and you don't ask that. But that's that, just my, that's, that women but don't that, ask. But that's my question. That's so, so, listen, ladies and gents, especially <laughs> ladies, call your last five exes. Don't say anything. Just ask them. Do you think my pussy is big or small? And just to see, see what kind of answer you get. You'll get it narrowed down because that's the same thing with a man. Is it like big that shit. Or they, small? Like like that like that shit that you ask. Okay. It's the same shit with a man. Like 
a man, he can assume his shit is big. But if you hear it from multiple women, then you start to say, you know what? Okay, I must have a big dick. Yeah. There but you go. God knows if he has a big dick. And do you know if your pussy is big? That's all I'm asking. Um, I don't think women know that. I think you know if you've been loose. I think you know if. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, so, because so, there are things you, you do. All, just did. No, but you, listen to what you I'm saying. What you, just did. you said, I don't know if it's <laughs> big, but I know if it's loose. I don't know. I said they would know oh, because they would know. Talking about the guy, the late, the girls, they would know about their own vagina because you know you've been with several guys. Mm-hmm. You know you haven't slowed down. You know you take three or four big dicks a week. Mm-hmm. You know your shit ain't tight. So they go another myth. So I'm gonna show you something. Show you something. Another myth. Okay. That's a myth. I'm finna show you. You tell me. We'll find out. The thing is this. Saw so what you just did. You said if this chick had. A bunch of guys. She's running through them, or this is that. Why does the number of guys that she had had to, or you know, come to her pussy to say what size she is? What? Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, well, why she can't just fuck one dude that had just one big dick? That's true. Oh, okay, either or. But a person there is has- no either or. Is that person had one dick that ruined her, <laughs> <laughs> and then you had one that probably had twenty guys, and they they could all been small. You, you never know. Like, I had, I had, I asked this girl, was she a virgin? I'm, I'm going to show you something about, like, women. I asked this girl, was she a virgin? This was kind of like, you know, after we did it. I was like, was you a virgin? You know, you was kind of tight, this and that. She was like, I consider myself a virgin. Now, I'm sitting there saying, I consider myself a virgin? What the fuck does that mean? That didn't even answer my question. Right, that's not And she yes said, not. the first guy didn't count because he was small. So... <laughs> Technically, you're saying I what I took your virginity. You know, she was like, "Yeah, I didn't bleed." Got you. Understand it, this and that. But you had sex, and that's just that's a myth thing to me. It's like it, it's not that I'm your first. You know, you you're still a virgin just because you don't want to count this guy because of his dick size. So you're not a virgin. Yeah, so she she's not a virgin. she wasn't a virgin. You right. know what I'm saying? So. Well, I think that's another myth that you have to bleed to lose your virginity. That's what I'm saying. To- that's what I was talking about. I was talking about. So because she didn't bleed, she considered herself yeah, that's a virgin. Because I bled. bled after getting fucking fingered. So by the time I had sex, the guy was accusing me of already of not losing my virginity. He was like, you didn't bleed. You ain't no virgin. Well, motherfucker, you broke my hymen uh, last year when you stuck your damn finger in my vagina. You know what I'm saying? And it happened to be the same guy. The same guy that fingered me one year was the same guy that took my virginity. So it's like he made me bleed when he fingered me. So it was like I technically he broke my hymen then. Mm -hmm. But that's another myth that I'm glad that we actually just tripped upon because that's a big one. Like I don't think our audience is out there having sex for the first time, but just in case. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to no, actually, no. you know, mm-hmm. what are we saying? Do you have to bleed to lose the virginity? So the hymen, when the hymen breaks, you have completely lost your virginity. So it doesn't matter how you lost it. But if your hymen broke, you're done. Or was I a virgin or not a virgin? Maybe. Did anybody I mean, answer that question for me? You might have to get the answer answered. Because, because my you hymen just got that, broke with a finger. Yeah, I, but I hadn't had sex yet. And see, and I and I wa- I used to watch Nip Tuck, and this woman rode a horse, and that broke her hymen. Right. So she didn't even have penetration, no nothing. So there you go, right there. So. So is she considered not a virgin because she was riding a horse or a hymen? But that's that was the thing. That's what I'm saying. She was saying she wasn't a virgin, and you just said the same thing. You was like, I was a virgin, but you fingered me, so you broke my yeah. hymen. Yeah. And she was riding a horse. So if you guys are listening to this conversation <laughs> and you know whether the answer is this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. Most importantly, chime in so we can actually address it when we film the upcoming episode of Relationship, uh, the new one, actually. We'll actually read that question just like we read our listener here. Uh, so let me go over a myth. Well, I already did one. You did one about penis size. I did one but you didn't about the me. hymen. What? You asked me a personal question. Well, I was talking about pussy sizes. Now, I guess I, I want to get uh, I want to get back now to just do all women love big dicks? Women don't like small dicks, so yes. But for me, when I say because I've had big dick that was 
not enjoyable. That was so. The, so for me, there's a such thing as too big. Mm. So I don't want to say all women like big dick, but I think all women have a size that they're comfortable with, and most of us aren't really comfortable with small, but we're uncomfortable with too big. You and kind of understand what I'm saying? Hey, I'm not no woman. I'm listening. I, my, a friend of mine could take, I think, a, a fucking horse dick and be good. You know what I'm saying? But me, I don't want. I, I don't. I don't need a ruined dick. Mm -hmm. I don't want something that don't look like it, it fit on your body. So, be, so because it's big, it it just automatically makes the sex good. It's just no, it's no because it's big. Don't make it good. What make it good is rhythm and but how deep you could go. But that's the but that's the myth. That's that's what's always conveyed. That if you look at TV shows, you look at women talking. Um, it, I think y'all bring that up uh, upon yourself. Because we talk about big dick, big all dick. The oh, time, girl, he all had the a big time. dick. Girl, yeah. you see the size of his shoe. That means he got a big dick. Everything's big dick. I get it. And the guys with the biggest dicks are the most cockiest, and those are the ones that send the dick pics. But out of those guys, the ones that really like to show off their dick being the, the length of their thigh is I would not. They could not touch me. Mm. Well, yeah, but what if you didn't have a choice? Oh, I, I always have a choice. No, not necessarily. Yeah, I do. I don't. I wouldn't date. I wouldn't date you know a guy that. Out? You know I wouldn't date a guy out? that that hurts me physically. That would hurt me physically. You know what tripped me out? I I, I cannot stand this. So I, I'm gonna bring this shit up. I hate when women be like, "What they can't do." I can't do that. I've even heard shit like that. Women be like, "Oh yeah, look, take a look at his dick." I can't even take that. This and that. <laughs> Let's just say, for instance, the, first first of all, you're lying. Because you just said that, well, I had a dick that hurt me. So and so I decided I would not go back to that dick. But you fucked him, though, right? Well, I had to fuck him to see if oh, it was stop, stop right there. You say what? You had to, right? I'm going to give him a <laughs> shot. You can't look at a dick and be like, I don't know. You can well, say, you damn, just, that well, you now you're doubt it. Now you're contradicting yourself. You I just know say, now. You just, you just I say, had to have it the first time I'm not, to see. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this. Listen, every situation calls different things like for instance like you was fortunate enough for that because like uh, I, I give you like another scenario a lot of times you might not get a chance to see the dick you might see it afterwards like when i have sex with a lot of women i don't walk in that i don't do the naked man and just you know come in that motherfucker just you know what i'm saying like <laughs> I'm in that bitch like that. Like, you know, I understand that women, some women have men that do that. Is, you know, come in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get that, but I just don't, I, you know, I typically don't do that, you know what I'm saying? And I'm more of a night fucker, so a lot of time lights ain't even on. Right. So what I'm saying is like, I'm not saying that you had to, I'm just saying like, but what if it's coming to a scenario similar to what you're talking about and not it just is what it is and now you like that dude. You understand what I'm saying? He's attached to that dick. I'm going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> shit! <laughs> Not All even the other shit <laughs> must be like super califragilistic, <laughs> xbiolidocious. If I'm gonna lay on my back and continue to be uncomfortable, for me, it's medically, it's just I cannot do it. And I'm, I'm talking about self-diagnosis. This, it, I just can't. This is not gonna work. I, I, I've never, I don't, I've never pushed a baby out of me. You know what I'm saying? I, this, I have a psychological problem even looking at something like this, thinking that I'm going to have sex with it. This, this is like, do you see how big around this is? I want to know who you saw like that. <laughs> That's my I first I saw question. somebody about damn close to it, honestly. <laughs> honestly. And this this is not healthy. This is not, this is not something that I want to uh, have part in. So, you know, that's a myth that all big dick is good because all big dick isn't good. So why is it a myth? It's a myth because it, you, it could hurt. It could be more painful than it's, sex is supposed to feel good. Mm -hmm. So if you're fucking, you know, playing with my uterus, as a, using my uterus as a punching bag because you have too much length, I'm, I'm not comfortable. And there's nothing you're going to be able to do to make me comfortable. Now, they do say maybe bending over and taking it from the back might be better with someone that size. But in my head... I don't really like sex from the back. So there's just so many negative things. I think negative energy that I'm putting out toward it anyway that I just don't think is going to work. And like I said, he would have to be super califragilistic in every other area in order for me to say, you know what, I'm about to figure it out. But I'll give you respect by saying you have right, you, you're right. If you like the guy because he is super califragilistic, then you're going to deal with the size of his penis. Stop saying that bird. Dude. That shit is bothering me. Why? <laughs> I like it. You were L7. That shit is bothering me. <laughs> I'm not L7. That shit is bothering me. You know what I'm saying? We're going to move on to the next one. 
myth. Like, why do all women? Because you know, I, I I went over size. Why do all women think like they pussy is good? Like, I, I think like every woman that I meet, like if you ask, so I'm not, and I'm not, myth, and I'm not saying that good. I'm not saying that a woman gonna come to me and just be like, hey, my pussy is bad. You know, so I'm not saying yeah, that. Cause but what know. I'm saying is like, it, it, it's like when you get down to the nitty gritty, y'all probably doing like some 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 light texting right before we finna go into round one. It's like you kind of getting closer to the asking the questions and this, this, and that. But mm-hmm. I noticed that I'm always on the side that the women is always making it seem like this is this is it for you, boy. Like once you get some of this shit here, <laughs> final frontier, star date. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gone. And I'm just like, <laughs> good like that. Huh? <laughs> like I'm trying to figure out. Like every woman I went to, somebody don't went to sleep in that thing. That's well, all that just means. Just because someone went to sleep in it, I just feel <laughs> like that is. I feel like y'all don't be pulling y'all Carfax, <laughs> and some of y'all <laughs> need to pull that motherfucker. No, like, you oh, need to pull it. I don't need to pull it. If I'm saying before you start talking, I don't need to pull it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna pull the Carfax, but I'm because I don't really go into a situation like if a woman, hey, you know, what I'm saying what size your dick is, I'm not gonna say anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, time's coming up. You'll see. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm not going to just start throwing out shit. But on the reverse side, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hit you with this catcher's mitt. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> not the catcher's mitt. Yeah, I hit you with this catcher's mitt. You know, this shit has changed your life. You know what I'm saying? It's just like one of those things. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, why does every woman think that they got good pussy? I mean, me personally. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ. I had this guy like he just got a little bit of it like just a little little bit of it and then he just looked at me and he was like that pussy good that must be his first like, time <laughs> like <laughs> had to be his first time it don't even sound like no shit that a motherfucker not his first time that like, motherfucker really getting pussy ain't even gonna say nothing like that like like if you fucking for real for real you're not even gonna say anything <laughs> You're not even going to say anything like that. But That's I got not you. true. I know that I'm taking... That I'm is not, not I, true. I believed I, him. It was sincere. I'm not And saying. I felt like the pussy was real good that night. So that's why you think you got good pussy? Because it's one guy said it? No, it wasn't that one guy. I'm, I'm just not, saying no, no, that no, particular not. time stood out to me. So that Because of the time. way he looked at it. It's not like he got out of it and was like, damn, that shit good. He sat down. You know, he had rolled a blunt. He did a whole bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? Then just happened to be smoking a blunt and looked at me and was like, What's it good? That's a motherfucking ass line. He was telling the truth. Why can't he just be high? <laughs> like he just he rolled a blunt. No, it wasn't the blunt one even. I'm just talking about it. This, no, no. this guy was sincere. He meant it. I believed him. And so I got good pussy. So lies. Lies is what it <laughs> takes for you women to understand. That y'all got good pussy. Got it. But I mean, why he had to be a liar? That's my story. I'm gonna say this. That's that's. I'm not I'm saying. I'm gonna it. always. So I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm gonna say this. It's like, uh, 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 and I hate to. I'm gonna compare it just so you know. Okay. I remember, you know, what I'm saying, being in probably. I think it was middle school. First tried out for the basketball team. Had us do suicides back and forth, back and forth. This I was tired as fuck. Came to the corner, they was like, hey, grab this Gatorade. This Gatorade was the best tasting <laughs> Gatorade I ever had in my life. Life! But I don't drink Gatorade no more. So it could be. Don't make me so. <laughs> so it could be that I was just fucking tired as hell. I could have drunk <laughs> piss water and it might have tasted just as good. I'm just saying that just because a motherfucker tell you it's so, don't mean it is what it is. Well, I, think I haven't just... tried a lemon lime Gatorade in years. But that one, that day, I had two other motherfuckers. Back to back. And I'm telling you right now. I think what you just, just described was being in the moment. Exactly. That moment made that and, Gatorade just really, really good. And that so moment that in that right. pussy made him very, very, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, tell those lies if you wanted to know how he got to them lies. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I'm not, I don't, I, I, trust me, I'm not discrediting you. I'm not saying that 
I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just saying that when you ask me the question, how is, and I'm, a, yeah. I, I just wanted to give two scenarios. That's one scenario right there. The other scenario is, believe it or not, a lot of times, like when you are fucking a woman, I'm just speaking as a man. When you're fucking a woman, a lot of times it's like if if you want some more, you're not going, you, you know, you're not going to say. And it, you know, you kind of want to. Yeah, yeah, you, you want to make a feel like, like that. That was good. We're gonna come back and you do that again. Like, yeah. that's like you want to stroke the ego, and I'm right. just, I just want to say, like, you know, he probably wanted some moments, like wanted to stroke the ego, this and that. But you know, you have to know the person, you know, because I know, like, we still you'll eat a meal, size, you know. You could have eaten a meal, you know what I'm saying? At, at let's just pick a place. Let's just say you at Ruth Chris. He had good steak, and you might say, "Damn, this is really good." While you're eating it. But that's the, you're hungry. You're in the moment, and the plate is right there, and the smell, everything is right there. But when you're you're full, you got a 45 minute drive home. You didn't had a cigarette. You didn't had a blunt. You're at home now on your nightcap, and that steak come back up. Like hours have passed, and you're like, damn man, like Ruth Chris is the shit. That steak was good. You're not lying about that steak, and you're also not lying about that pussy either. I don't know if I buy. That shit that you want to say, like I, I'm saying, you know, like there's too much time that passed for you we'll to have to be remiss about that same piece of pussy. It's good. No, it's not. Drunken, <laughs> drunken sex. <laughs> is is drunk sex one of the best sex to have? Um, I'm gonna say, for me, I don't think I've had the greatest drunk experience where I'm gonna say it topped every sexual experience I've ever had. Mm. But I will say that my inhibitions are gone. I don't care about growling or drooling or Shit. scratching the motherfucker back or I just don't give a damn when I'm drunk. Nigga fucking a bear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Have you ever like had a little bit of drip right here? Yeah, that type. What? Not from that end. But I was getting here one time. Mm -hmm. Never forget it. I was getting here Making one drool time. Making good. And while the girl was sucking my dick, she had this long strand coming from her pussy that was like on my knee. It was just dripping, like, on my knee. It's probably the sexiest thing I ever fucking seen in my oh, life. Wow. It, 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 that, and that's what I was saying. I'm like, wow. Like, and it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, like, just looking down and seeing that long, I mean, you just, you know, it, it was almost like, you know, I hate to compare the two, but I got to. It's like a long piece of snot when you see a child, like, like crying and that snot won't break. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like Continuous like, flow. Yeah, you'd be like, that's not going to ever break. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just like this long cum strand. That was just hitting my knee. And I fucked with her for a minute just because of that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit was like mind blowing. I'm like, God damn, like this shit is like crazy. And that was some um that was some drunken sex for me. Okay. Not for her. You know what I'm but saying? But you were drunk. Yeah, I was a bit tipsy, but I remember that strand. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget it. But I think that's where that myth comes from. Is because you kind of lose your inhibitions and you don't care. Well, I think for I think really for women they lose their inhibition. Mm -hmm. But I think for men, hey man, it's some shit in these drinks makes your dick hard as can be. Like I done had some 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 drinks that I came in that bitch like the man of steel, like <laughs> Superman. And it's just like, you know it's the drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, you like, you know what? <gasps> she finna go to the fucking moon with this shit right here. Like, this shit is finna go down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's different ones. Like, Jen done done it to me a lot of times. Steel Reserve done done it to me a lot of times. Um, Hennessy. Um, Thug Passion. It's just certain drinks that just kind of, I think, get guys to a certain level. Where it's like even if you Libido, huh? it, it's just like if you even if you wasn't in the mood, it's just like your dick like wake up, come on man, like it's time to test some shit up, you know what I'm saying? And then you just sitting there with a hard dick because of the liquor. So and I think that's a lot of times why women always like you want to drink. You so if drink? you have a woman that's <laughs> lost her inhibitions and you got a man with a super hard dick. Yeah. Drunken sex is some of the best sex. Those are the things we talk about right here on Relations. You get a new episode every single Friday night. My name is Kayla Lassiter. You can find me at Kayla Lassiter on Facebook, at Kayla Lassiter on Twitter, and on IG. You can find your boy on both platforms. Holla at me. Give me y'all comments. I want everything. Like. Both, both platforms. Subscribe to the channel too. Subscribe. 51 Spade, Twitter, and IG. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And guess what? We're appearing on other platforms. Go check us out on Spotify, 
uh, iTunes, Apple Music, and iHeartRadio. Yes, on iHeart. That's right, man. So holla at your boy. We're, uh, we're going to keep the shows coming. Peace.